Hey, what's going on guys? So I want to start a new series where we take some UI mockups of different components and convert them to HTML and CSS. So we're going to be using this UI design daily.com website, which I love. I think that there's just a ton of great UI components here and you can download the files in sketch. Some are Figma, Photoshop, XD, but they're really modern looking UI components and landing pages and stuff like that. So I figured that with each episode we can do two or three of these and um, I have about 10 done already. So I'm going to do those and then I'll start taking requests as well. Um, and I think this is, this will really help sharpen your CSS skills, whether you're a beginner or you're, you know, a, an advanced programmer that just is, doesn't do too well with CSS and you want to work on those skills. So we'll be using Flexbox, Grid, all that stuff. Uh, media queries and so on. So today I want to do three different projects. So this will be quite a long video, but there's three separate projects and I'll go ahead and put the the timestamp of where each one starts if you don't want to do all three. So the first one is going to be this blog cards project. So basically we just have these three cards with an image, some text, a little label here, a user. So we'll use CSS grid for this to create the columns. Pretty easy, pretty simple first project. Then we're going to create this login page. So we have this this box with two separate sections. We have the form, the Google login button, the remember me checkbox and so on. And then we have these features over here with some font awesome icons. Okay, this one here is an ads manager, kind of a dark theme with this is actually a table. So we're going to style this table to look nice. And if you want to continue on and add some functionality to it, you can. But this is all about HTML and CSS and you can download these files and sketch if you want. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to basically look at it and recreate it with HTML, CSS. OK, and there might be some slight differences, but um, for the most part, it'll be the same thing. So I'm going to jump into VS Code and I have my three folders here. The first one we're going to work on is this blog post project. And this has a, a few images which you can get from the repository in the description. Uh, so we have balloons, city, rover. They're actually different images than the ones used in the you know, on UI design daily, but you can use whatever images you want. And then we also have some user images as well. So we have that and then we just have an empty index HTML and empty style sheet, which I'm going to open. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. So now, like I said, we're going to use the grid here. So these cards will be in a three column grid. You can use Flexbox if you want, but I just want to mix it up a little bit. So let's start with the HTML, which is going to be pretty simple. Basically, we have a card then we'll have a card header with the image and a card body with the rest of the stuff here. So let's create a boilerplate here. So exclamation enter and I'll just say blog posts. For these projects, I'm going to call them whatever they're called here. It's actually blog cards, so we'll call it blog cards. And we want to link in our style sheet, which is right in the root of this folder. And in the body here, I'm going to wrap everything in a container and then we'll have our cards. So like I said, we'll have a card class with a card header and inside the header we'll have the image. So this image is going to be let's see, images and Rover and then under the card header. So you want to go outside of that div. We want the card body inside the body. We have the tag, which I'm going to use a span. OK, I'm going to use a span tag with the class of tag. And then for different colors, we'll have different classes like tag teal. And inside here, we'll say technology. All right. So underneath that, still within the card body, let's put our H4. I'm actually going to paste the H4 and the paragraph in. OK, some of this stuff I'll paste in just so it's not repetitive or it takes too long to type. Um, so under the paragraph here, we'll have a class of user and let's have the user image. So this is going to be images and then user one. And then underneath that, we're going to have a class of user info. And in user info, we'll have the name of the user that posted this. So we use an H5 here, say carry Brewer. And then let's have a small tag and say that this was posted two hours ago. All right. So that's an example of one of the cards. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to open this with live server. 
So it's going to look pretty horrible at first, obviously, before we add our CSS. But you can see we have our image, our card header, and then our card body with the user image. Now we have three of these. So what I'll do is I'm just going to paste in the other two and then I'll, we'll just take a look. It's basically the same formatting. It's just uh, it's just different content. So let me grab those real quick. So underneath this div of card, you still want to be within the container. I'm going to paste those other two in. So this is the second one. I'm using the balloons image and I change this to tag purple as the popular. The text here is the same. The user is user two. And then we have some um, different names here as well. Same thing here. Just have a different image. We're using tag pink. And uh, the user user three image. So if I save that, take a look, you can see we have all three. Now we can start to style this. So let's jump into style CSS. So the first thing I want to do is grab our font. I'm going to be using the Open Sans font. So let's just quickly go to fonts.google.com and I'm going to grab Open Sans. I want to let's see once regular 400 select the style and semi bold 600. And then if we go over to embed, we can either link, add the link to our HTML or what, like I'm going to do, grab the import and put that right in our CSS. So I'll copy that and paste that in. Now I'm going to add the universal selector here and I want uh, for the box sizing. I do this in just about every project. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to use border box because we don't want any padding to affect width or anything like that. And then in the body. Let's set the background color. So we're going to set that to hexadecimal F78. Uh, I'm sorry, F7F 8FC, which is like a almost like a light light pink. And then the font family, we're going to set that to Open Sans. And just add in sans serif here. Now, you'll see this in a lot of these projects where I want to <coughs> excuse me. I don't know what the hell's wrong with my throat where I want to center everything like we do it here. So it's just like one thing in the center, even here. A, an easy way to do this is to just add display flex onto the body. So if we add display flex, we can then add align items to the center and we can add justify content to the center, which will put it in the middle both ways, horizontally and vertically. or the cross axis and the main axis. Now, in order for it to be centered vertically, we also have to have a height and we want the height to take up the whole thing. So we'll use 100 viewport heights. Okay, so that just means it'll take up the whole height no matter what, no matter how big or small it is. And then I'm just going to remove the margin. So this is a common style that we're going to see just to kind of center everything. Okay, so now you can see everything centered. Um, next thing we'll work on is the container, which is around everything. It's around all three cards. So let's add the container class. And we just want I'm just going to display this as a grid. Okay, so the way that the grid works, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, but the container, since we said display grid, every direct child is going to be a grid, a grid item or a grid element. And every direct child is just the div with the class of card. Now we want these cards to be in a three column row. So to do that, we can add grid template columns. And if we want them all to be even like we could do sizes here. But if we want them all to be even, we can use fraction or, or FR units. So doing this would give us three columns, but an easier way or I guess a, a cleaner way to do it would just say repeat. three times one FR. So if I save that now, these are going to be lined up in three columns. Now the images are breaking out. So um, let's handle that. So remember, we have a uh, card header image. And we'll set the width of these images to 100%, which will then contain them. inside their container. Now, some of them are different heights. So I'm going to add a height of uh, let's say 200 pixels. And I'm also going to use object fit, which is kind of like background size for a background image. And we can set that to cover. Okay, so there we go. 
Now, as far as the container width, I don't want it to expand the whole browser, so or the whole viewport. So let's set width, let's say 940 pixels, so that will make that a little thinner. Now, if we want space in between these, we can use grid gap, or actually, it's just gap now. Uh, so we can set gap to let's say 20 pixels, and that should spread them out a little bit. Uh, what else? We want Let's set margin auto here as well, just to make sure everything is always centered. And now we can start to work on the cards themselves. Okay, so let's go right above where we have the card header and let's add the card class. And let's set a background color of white. And I'm going to set a border radius here of 10 pixels. and a box shadow we want this to have a drop shadow so i'm going to set this to 0 2 pixels blur 20 pixels and then the color is going to be rgba so red green blue alpha and we want it to be black so three zeros and then the alpha the transparency just 0.1 so very very light shadow and just set this to overflow hidden and set the width to 300 pixels. All right, so we're getting there. Now, um uh, let's see. We did the header, so let's deal with this right here. That doesn't look too good. So the card body is the class we want to target here. So I'm actually going to set this to display flex, except I don't want it to be horizontal. Right now, if I save, you'll see everything is horizontal now. They're all flex items and they're in a row. I want to change the flex direction to column so they go up and down. So basically back to how it was. But now I can use align items. I want to align items to the start and I want to add some padding. So we'll add padding of 20 pixels and I just want to set a minimum height or a min height of 250 pixels. All right, so that's starting to look a little better. Now, let's see what we do now. Let's do the um let's do the tag. So this here, these have a class of tag and they also have a special color class. So, let's do the tag class first. I'm going to set the initial background to white and then let's set the border radius to 50 pixels. I want it to be pretty rounded. Font size, we'll lower that to 12 pixels. Margin 0. Uh let's see. The the color of the text. Actually, the color of the text is white. <clears throat> so let's change this here to we'll just do gray. We'll do a little dark. Let's do like that. And then let's see padding. So padding I'm going to do 2 top and bottom 10 left and right and let's make it uppercase so text transform is going to we'll set it to uppercase. So if we save that it's going to look like this by default. Now we do have sp specific colors. So let's add to that or let's add those. So tag teal. We're going to set a background color and this is going to be hexadecimal 92d 4e4. Okay, and then I'm just going to throw the other ones in here. So purple and pink as well. So if I save that, now these are different colors. Okay, so let's handle, let's see. We have this h4 in the paragraph, so I want to add a little bit of styling to that. So let's uh we could say card body h4 and i just want to say margin 10 pixels on the top and bottom and then for the paragraph and of course if you want to change something if you think it looks better a different you know with different values you can do that as well i'm going to set the font size of the paragraph to 13 pixels and then for margin let's do 40 on the bottom yeah Good. So now, the last thing we have here is the user. Okay, so we have this image and we have the user info. So let's deal with this image first. 
So we'll say user and I'm going to display flex and let's set the margin. Uh, let's do margin top auto. So if we save that now it's going to be basically aligned to the left. So for the image, let's say user image. I'm going to set a width and a height of 40 pixels for the image. Okay, and then let's make it rounded. So we'll say border radius. Let's set that to 50%, which will make it a rounded image. And let's set some margin on the right so it's not right up against the text. So 10 pixels. There we go. Good. And then for let's see, we have the H5 and the small tag, which are in the user info class. So let's say user info H5. And let's set that margin to zero. And then let's <clears throat> excuse me. You know, cough drop or something. Uh, user info small. I just want to change that color. So let's say color. Let's say hexadecimal 888785. Give us that gray color. All right. So that looks pretty good. Now, if it's If this gets smaller, you see that it gets cut off. So I'm just going to do a, a really, really simple uh, solution here and just change it from three columns to one column in a media query. So if we want to target a screen that's, let's say, less than 940, we can add a media query and say for the max width, if the max width is 9. Let's do 940 pixels. Basically, if it's under 940 pixels, then we'll take the container, which is the grid container, because remember we, we did display grid and we'll change the value of grid template columns to simply one FR, which is one column. So now when it's small, you can see that they go on top of each other. Now I do want them in the middle, so I'm going to add to the container here. Uh, justify items to the center and now they should be in the middle. Okay, so I think that that's good for the first project. So we'll go ahead and close this up. And let's just make this a little bigger. Okay, so the second one is going to be close that up is going to be this form here, which is going to be separated into two separate parts. We have the form over here. You can either log in with Google or with the email and password. And then we have this features section, this list with the icons. So let's start on that. So I'm going to open up and stop live server for now and open up login. And I have this Google image here for the Google button. You could even use font. Awesome. I believe there's a Google icon and font. Awesome. But we're just we'll just use the image. And let's open up our index HTML and CSS. So the first thing we'll do is, of course, just generate a boilerplate and we'll call this login. We want to link our style sheet and then we're also going to be using font. Awesome. So let's grab that real quick. I'll just go to CDNJS dot com font. Awesome. We'll grab the CSS file here, the link tag. Copy that, close that up and paste that right in there. Okay, so in the body here and we're going to be using Flexbox, we're going to separate the the form part of it and then the list into two columns. So let's give this a container. We'll have our form. <clears throat> we don't need an action, but we'll have our form as one flex item and then we'll have our features. So class of features here as a second. So let's work on the form first. First thing we'll have is our Google button. So button with the class of BTN, which will just be like a generalized button class. But then we'll also have a BTN dash ghost, which will be like a transparent uh, style button. And in here we want our Google image. So let's point to images, Google PNG. And next to that, we'll say log in with Google. So that's our button. Now, underneath the button, we're going to have a little uh, small tag here that says or because you have the option to log in with your, you know, your email and password. 
So let's create our email field with a form control class around it. So form control and then we have our label for email. Email and then let's have an input. Let's give it a type of email. We don't need a name. ID will be email as well. And let's add a placeholder. So say enter your email. So we have that and then we also want our, our password. So what I'll do is just grab that and let's change. Let's actually just we'll do ahead and we'll do a command D here and just choose all the emails and change with password. Make that uppercase and I'm just going to put in password for the placeholder because that's what the demo. That's what this has. So just password. Now underneath that we want to put the uh, remember remember me checkbox and the forgot password link. So under this form control, let's add a class of checkbox uh, container. And inside here we're going to have our checkbox input. So we want a type of checkbox. The ID is going to be remember. And let's add a label. So label for remember. We'll say remember me. And then we also want our link, which isn't going to actually go anywhere, but we want this to say uh, forgot password. Okay, and then under that div, under the checkbox container, we want our login button, which is going to have the class of BTN. And then underneath that, we want just uh, some small text that says don't have an account. So don't have an account and then we'll have a link. And say sign up. Okay, so that's basically the first side. We can open this up with a live server. It's not going to look very good. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now we need to add See, where is it? We need to add this part now, which is the features. So this is going to be pretty simple. We're just basically going to have some divs. Each one of these will be a div with an icon and some text. So inside features, let's add. Uh, we'll have, have some divs with the class of feature for each one. And we'll have our icon. This in this case is going to be FAS and then FA dash code will be the first icon. And we'll have an H3 says development and then the paragraph I'm going to just paste in that text here. I'm going to use the same text for all of them, but that's the first feature. Then we'll go ahead and grab this feature div, copy it down twice. The second one says features, so we have features and then updates. It doesn't have to be exact. And then the this icon is going to be FA gift and then this will be updates and this will be FA dash edit. All right, let's save that. Check it out. Make sure our icons are showing which they are and that should be it for the HTML. So let's jump into our CSS. Now, some of this is going to be pretty similar to um, to what we did with the first project. So I'm going to just go to our blog posts CSS. We're going to use the same font. We're going to use the box sizing here and a lot of this body stuff will actually be the same as well. So I'm going to copy this stuff and paste it in here. Now the background color is going to be different. So we're going to change that to F 7 F 8 FC. Uh, this is going to be the same. We're going to add a color here though. We don't want the default black. We want this to be one for one C to C. Right. Yeah. And then we'll keep the display flex and then center everything height 100 because we're basically we're doing the same thing. We're just centering the basically that main, you know, that main UI into the middle. So we'll keep that. Uh, let's see the links. I want to change to the Google blue color, which is going to be hexadecimal two seven six two. EB 
And then let's just take away any underline with text decoration none. And then for the container, the container will have a background color of white. And we're going to set a border radius. Just a little rounded. We'll do three pixels. Now it has a very thick border. If we take a look at the design here, you can see that this border around it's pretty thick. We're going to use 20 pixels. So let's say border with a width of 20 pixels, a style of solid and a color of DC E 7 FF. I think that let's just check that out. Yep, good. Now the let's see the width of this container. I'm going to set to a thousand pixels. And I'm just going to also give it a Mac the max width. I'm going to set that to 100% and I'm going to display flex because remember the two items within it. Take a look here. So the two items are the form and the features. So we want to make sure that we have those side by side. Um, let's see. We also want a little bit of a box shadow. So let's do zero four five and then RGBA black and zero point one. So very light box shadow around it. Okay, so let's style. Let's start to style the form. I didn't give it a class or anything, so we'll just it's the only form here. So we'll just use form directly and let's set a border to the right kind of separating from the features. So we'll do one pixel solid and then the color will be E C F two F F. It's a very light border. Um, let's display flex here because I want to align everything, but I want it to I don't want it to be a row. If I save it now, everything is aligned horizontal. I don't want that. So I want to change the flex direction to column. If I do that, then it'll go back up and down. And then I want to align. Uh, let's see, we want to align items center and justify content center. And let's set the padding. to 40 pixels. All right, so let's start to style the the form here. So we have uh actually you know what? Let's do the button first. So we have the BTN class which we have quite a bit to do to. So let's set the background color. Initially, we're going to set that to um this color here. this blue or the very dark blue um, and then we'll set the border to two pixels solid and that same color. Remember, we're going to have that ghost class as well for the Google button and we're going to set the border radius here to three pixels. Set the color of the text to white. We're going to set a display flex. Remember, we have the image inside of it and we're going to align items center and justify content center. Now the font family, just to make sure that we get the open sans, we're going to set that to inherit from its parent. We're going to set the font weight to bold. We'll set the font size to 14 pixels. Oops. And let's set the padding overall padding to 10 pixels. We'll set a margin as well to 20 on the top and bottom. And a width, I want it to just spread across its container 100%. Okay, so that's what the button is going to look like by default. Now, for this one, This has an image in it, so we need to fix that. It's too big right now. We also want it to separate out from its text, right? So let's take the button image and let's set a margin right of five pixels to move it over and let's set the width to 20 pixels. That should make it look better. Good. Let's also add a uh, cursor pointer to this. 
Now this I, I want this to be white or transparent. So remember we have the class of BTN ghost around that or we should. Yep, so I have BTN ghost. So let's see, we'll put that right here. So BTN dash ghost. So the background for this, we're going to set to transparent and then the border color. So the border color for this will be EC. It'll be this color here. And then the color of the text is going to be one for one. It's going to be this here. So let's check that out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the form looks horrible, so let's go ahead and fix that. Or I should say the, the form inputs. So let's see, we have, um, I'm going to go above the button and below the form. And for the form control, which wraps around the label and the input, let's set the margin of that to 10 pixels zero and set a width of 100%. And then we'll style the label. Okay, so the label I want to display inline block so that it's a side by side uh, and then font weight. We'll set the font weight of the labels to bold and then let's set the margin bottom. So we'll move it down, move stuff down a little bit, five pixels and save. Now I want to style the these inputs because these don't look very good. Now remember the inputs are the text. So we have or not text, but email, which is basically, you know, looks like a text input. Same thing with password. But checkbox is does we don't want to style this the same as the other two. So what I'll do is say the input and I'm going to use the not pseudo selector so we can say not. And if you're new to CSS, you might not know this, but we can do not and then we can select the type so we can say type equals checkbox. So what it's going to do is style any input that's not a checkbox and we want to set the background uh, background color to transparent. We're going to give it a border of two pixels. So this will be the email and the password field. Say solid and color is going to be ECF to FF. And we'll set a border radius. Slight curve three pixels and font family. We're going to go ahead and inherit open sans and let's set the font size to 14 pixels and we'll set the padding to 10 and the width to 100%. So let's check that out. Good. So that looks pretty good. Um, I think that's I think that's it for the form. No, the checkbox. So this this here doesn't look that great. So let's fix that. So remember we have the um, the input here and we have the label and then we just have this link here. So we want those to kind of be side by side. Um, and it's wrapped in a, a class of checkbox container. So let's add a checkbox container. I'm going to use flex here to align. Now the space I, I want to justify content here. Basically, but the the input and the label, I want any remaining space to be in between. So I'm going to use space between for justify content. So that way, You know, they're a side by side and any space goes in between. And we'll fix this doesn't look too good still, but we'll fix that. So for checks, checkbox container, let's say font size 14 and let's set some margin bottom. Because remember, we have that, you know, already have a count thing. We want that to be down below. So let's do 15 pixels. on the bottom and let's make sure we have width 100%. Okay, now we'll go ahead and start we'll go ahead and style the the um, the label and the link. So, let's say checkbox container label and I'm just going to give this a color. So, for the color we'll do hexadecimal 7A7 
E8C for that, which is just a uh, gray. And then the font weight, I'm going to change <clears throat> from from bold back to normal for the label. And then the link that's in the checkbox container, which is the forgot password, I'm just going to set the margin left to auto, which should place it where I want it. Yeah, so now these are across from each other. All right, so I think that this side looks pretty good. Um, I do want this to be kind of split in half because of the, the how the content is this, you know, this is a smaller space, so we can use the flex property for that. So I'm going to set I'll just set each each side to flex one. So flex one here and then for the features. So remember, we have that class of features, which is the other flex item. We'll say flex one and I have a flex box crash course if you want to dig deeper into this. But now actually that's too much. So maybe um, let's set the form to 1.5. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to set the uh, I want to set this to 1.5. There we go. That looks good. Well, this doesn't. We'll fix this in a minute. But this side and, and as well as the split, I think looks pretty good. So let's go on to do the features. So we also want some padding for everything here. So let's do 40 pixels padding. That'll push everything in. Okay, already looks much better. And then for the feature class, remember each of those elements has a div with the class of feature. I'm going to add padding left. And we'll go ahead and do 30 pixels and then I'm going to position this relative because we actually want to position the icon absolute. So we'll do position relative and then margin 40 pixels zero. So top and top and bottom 40 pixels. Now the icon here, I'm going to position that relative inside of the feature. So I'm sorry, position at absolute within the feature, which is positioned relative. So let's say feature uh, feature icon. Let's change the color to. So the color is going to be hexadecimal two, seven, six two EB. And the position we're going to set that to absolute within the feature div and let's set the positioning to top five pixels and left zero. So there we go. So now those are in the correct position. Uh, let's see the H3. I'm going to remove the margin. So let's say feature feature H3 and set the margin to zero and then the paragraph. So the feature paragraph. Let's set the font size to 14 pixels and let's set the line height. So the line height, I'm going to set to 1.8, make it a little bigger and then the margin. Let's do five pixels on the top and bottom. OK, so I think that that looks pretty good. I mean, it might not be exact, but I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks a little better, actually. Now, as far as being responsive, I mean, once you get to like here, it starts to look pretty crappy. So what we'll do is pr something pretty simple. We'll just add a media query here. So let's say media set a max width. So we'll do 768, which is standard like, you know, iPad, or whatever tablet. And then we'll take the container and set the instead of flex direction row, which is the default, we'll set it to column. And then remember, the form has a border right on it. There's no need for that anymore. So we'll take the form and we'll set the border uh, border right to zero. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's fine. OK, so that's that project. Now, the last one we're going to be doing is this here, this ads manager. So this is actually a table. So we're going to be doing some table styling. 
So let's close this up, close that up, that, and let's open up Ads Manager Index and Style CSS. And again, all the code uh, and any images and stuff will all be in the GitHub repo. There's actually no images for this project though. So let's see, first thing we want to do obviously is the HTML. So let's do that. I'm going to call this Ads Manager and that uppercase and let's add in our style sheet style CSS um, we're also going to be using font awesome here so I guess I'll just I'll just grab that from the login so take that put that in there so again we're going to have a container that wraps around everything Oops. and inside the container we're going to have a table table. I mean, this is pretty basic HTML. We have a head and then we have a table row in the head with table headings. So this will be name. Actually, let's just we have what two. So this will be name. Clicks. So this is like a UI for if you have ads on your website and something like Google Analytics or whatever. Or I'm sorry, Google AdSense. Um, some kind of tracking tool priority and impressions and then let's add just an empty th here that's going to be for the delete button now underneath the table head we're going to have a table body and let's add our table row now some of the rows are going to be styled differently as far as the border and so on so we're going to give this a class of priority we're going to use these classes priority 200 and then let's have a, a column here so td is a table column and we'll add in sure so this is a product so sure se 110 in ear and you can of course use whatever you want headphones and then the number of clicks so we'll say 857 Um, and then we want here is the impressions, right? Wait, so no, this is the name, this is the number of clicks, then we want the priority. So if we look at here, we have priority with a number and this little dot here, which I'm actually going to use font awesome for. I'll use the circle icon for that. So let's do. to i f a s and then f a dash circle and we'll put 200 okay then we want the what's next the impressions which say 190 and then the last column is going to be the delete button so let's say button and let's give it a class of delete and inside here we'll have an icon FAS and FA dash trash will give us a trash icon. So let's just save that and I'm going to open this up with live server. Okay, so we see the circle icon, we see the trash icon. Good. Now, as far as the rest of the products, I'm going to just paste these table rows in because it's going to be very repetitive if I type them all out. Of course, you can copy from the the code in the repository, but we'll paste these in. So the first one here was priority 200. This is priority 600 for a class. Our favorite iPhone solution. This is 300, 200. All right. So, I mean, pretty simple. It's just it's structured the same. It just doesn't have the uh, it's just different content. Now, I'm not going to be doing You guys can add this as kind of a bonus if you want, but I'm not going to do like the search and filters and stuff. I just want to style the table just to keep this short. But of course, you can take that on as as a, a challenge to add this other stuff here. So I think that's pretty much all we need for the HTML. So let's jump into our style sheet. Now, again, I'm going to be using some of the same type of styling. So I'm going to copy from one of these other files, other style sheets. I'm going to grab the um, actually I'm not using 
Open Sans. I'm using Source Sans Pro. So let's go to Google Fonts. And let's search for Source right here, Source Sans Pro. And we want, let's see, extra, yeah, let's grab Extra Light 200, select, and uh, Semi Bold 600. And then we'll grab the import, grab that, and let's see. So this is our style sheet. We'll paste that in. I am going to copy this, the universal and the uh, body here. Copy that and paste that in. So for the background color for the body, this is going to be a dark color. So let's do one C. 223B. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So just a really like dark blue. Um, color. Color. What do we want to set as color? White. Yeah, we'll set this to white. Or let's do. Um, yeah, we'll keep that at white. And then for the font family here, let's change this from Open Sans to Source Sans Pro. Um, I'm going to keep the, the flex with the center because I'm just moving everything to the middle. Same with the height and I'm going to remove the margin. So, so the body is good um, for the container. Let's set the background color here to hexadecimal two seven three three four nine and we're going to set the border radius on the container to 10 pixels we'll set a box shadow so this is going to be zero five pixels 10 pixels rgba and then this is going to be kind of like a bluish so it's going to be 12 for red 16 green 31 for blue and then for the alpha we'll do 0 uh, 0 0.4 okay so slight shadow padding let's do 100 pixels all around and the margin set that to uh, auto and let's set the width we'll do a thousand pixels here as well so same width as the the form we just did so if we take a look at what we have so far, it should look like this. So the rest of the styles we have is really for the table and the table columns and stuff like that. Um, so let's grab table and let's set. I'm going to set a color here of E2 three times. Oops. E2, E2, E2. And let's set padding. So overall padding on the table to 10 pixels and let's set a width of 100 percent. Now I want to style the 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 table headings and the um, the table columns. I want them to align to the left and we'll add some padding there as well. So let's take the table headings and let's take the table TD, which is the columns. And let's set a padding of 15 pixels and let's text align to the left. Okay, there we go. So this is starting to look a little better. Um, the table rows, I want to give them a background color. So let's say table TR. Or we'll, even, we'll say table T body. Because I want this to be the table rows in the body. And set the background color and this is going to be hexadecimal value 1C223B. So if I save that, there we go. Um, so when we hover over it, I want it to have an effect. So we'll take this and let's add a hover state and then set the background color to we'll do hexadecimal one five one B three one. 
So that'll be on hover and we'll also add a box shadow. So 035 RGBA black and 0.2. So that way we get that little hover effect. Good. Um, let's see. So as far as the let me just look at this real quick. So we have this. So I want we want these rounded corners here. We want this border, these colored borders, but we also want the rounded corners. Um, so let's grab the first the first column in the row. So we'll do that with table uh, T body. So we want the body table row and then column and we want the first let's use first of type. So it'll give us the first column and we want the the basically the left side of it to have a rounded radius rounded corners. So we'll use border top left radius and set that to five pixels Oops, five pixels and we also want to do border bottom left radius and set that to five pixels. So if we save that and we take a look you can see now this side is rounded. Now as far as um, let's see do we want this round? Yeah, we actually want that's rounded as well. So we want both of both sides rounded. So we can close that up. So let's actually copy this. And we'll say last of type. So now we're saying the last column in the row but we want to do right. So both of these should be right radius. And then I also want to text align to the center because this is the delete button, right? So we want that in the center. Um, let's do let's do the borders now. So remember we have those priority classes. We'll go ahead and table. Let's just copy. So we have TR and then if it has a class of priority dash 200. And the numbers come from these, you know, these priorities in here. Um, so if it comes from that, then let's say border left and we're going to add a five pixel border solid and then the color is going to be 9 C7. C64. Okay, so if we take a look, no, that didn't work. Um, and that's because we need it to be on the column and we want it to be on the first of type. So the first column. There we go. So anything with priority 200 has this color here. Now for the other colors, I'm just going to paste them in which are the what 300 and 600. Yeah. So we'll just paste those in just to different color borders. So 300 600 we save that. There we go. Good. Now the uh, the icon here the little circle is too big so we're going to make that a little smaller by using transform scale. So let's say table T body TR TD and then we want the FA dash circle icon and we want to use the transform property and set the scaling to we'll do half so 0 0.5 so that's sh that should scale that down. Now we want the color to change as well based on the priority right so let's take um, I guess we'll just copy this. And then we want to add the class here. So priority 200 and then that icon should have the same color as this up here. Priority 200. So I'm going to copy this and paste that in. And then again for the other two I'm just going to paste those in. So we're just changing the color of the circle based on uh, I'm sorry this shouldn't this should be color not border. There we go. 
based on the priority. So now you can see these circles now match the color of the, the border. So now let's handle the delete so we can make that look a little better. Delete button. Oops, forgot that. So let's say class delete. We'll add a background color of let's say 242 C4C. And we want to have no border, so border zero, but we want a border radius. Slight border radius of two pixels. And then for the color, let's do hexadecimal nine zero nine zero nine zero. And let's set a cursor to the pointer. I'm actually going to move that up here. And let's set the font size to 16 pixels. So this is remember, this is the, the button, the trash icon. And then the padding will set to five on the top and bottom, 10 on the left and right. I'm going to set the opacity to zero. Now, when I hover over it, when I hover over the table, so basically what I'm doing, if I save this now, you can't see the delete button. But when I hover over the table row, I want to then be able to see the delete button. So the way that we can do that is by taking the table um, body and then the table row and then on hover, we want to style the delete and we want to simply change the opacity to one. So now when I hover over the table row, you can see that then we see the, the trash can. And you don't have to do that. If you want all the trash cans displayed, you can. But I think that looks a little cleaner. Did that actually? Yeah. And that's how it was originally as well. All right, cool. So we're pretty much there. Um, as far as responsiveness, tables are, are difficult. But what I'm going to do here is create a media query. So let's say media and let's say max width. 768. So anything under 768, let's take the container and let's lessen the padding to 20 pixels. What did I have it at? So container initially was at 100 pixels. Now we're lessening it to 20 pixels. Um, the delete button, however, I'm going to always show on smaller screens. So if we take the table T body table row delete. Let's set the opacity to one. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is actually hide the third column just because we're trying to squeeze it into a little space. So a lot of times when you have a table, you might need to show less data. So let's say table. So we want our table heading first. So and the way that we can target a specific column is with nth of type. So this is a pseudo selector. We can select basically selecting the third column here. We want to put a three in here. And then we also want not only the table heading, but the column itself. So TD. Right. And then we can just set that to display none. So if we save that now, that's what it's going to look like on smaller screens, which looks a little better. All right, so I think that's it. So we now have these three projects that we've converted to HTML and CSS and feel free to use use these in your projects if you want. If you want to add to it, if you want to build an actual application from it, you can do that. But hopefully this helped you, you know, sharpen your CSS skills. I know that even if you learn specific CSS properties, sometimes it's hard to really put it put them into play and think of something to, to create. So hopefully this helps you out and you might want to check out UI design daily. They don't sponsor me in any way whatsoever. It's just a site that I really, really like. And uh, I think that they have some really cool UI components here, but you can try to do some on your own. Uh, I have some other ones that I'll be doing in the next episode and I will be taking requests as well. All right, that's it guys. Hopefully you like this and I'll see you next time.